he's played really well today, Eric Hansen. It was just maybe two bad moves in the last game that swung things. He was actually winning, and uh, two moves, three moves later, he was just checkmated out of the blue, out of nowhere. So keep doing what he's doing, Eric, and he will have a chance. We do, meanwhile, see the Spanish opening and a variation of the anti-Berlin. So not the Berlin defence, not the Berlin endgame or the Berlin draw that we're used to seeing quite recently among top players. Eric keeping peace on the board, keeping the tension, not allowing too many trades early. Anish, meanwhile, trying to crack open the centre, trying to trade pawns. And uh, he knows a draw is enough for him as Black. He's chosen one of the most solid openings out there. So Eric, he's an expert with 1e4. He's been playing it his whole career. Can he keep the tension? Can he outplay Giri from this very symmetrical position right now? That is the question. Hmm. It's uh, level-ish, but still a lot of tension. And what is it about for Anish then? He only needs a draw, but we have seen some bad situations when you play too much on the draw, right? Yeah, Simon, what would you recommend? Playing for a draw is the hardest thing in the world, right? Yeah, I, I think you have to play a normal game, but you've got to play for the win. It sounds a bit odd, but you can't play for the draw. Uh, when you need a draw, don't play for the draw, yeah. uh, which is just weird, right? It's a paradox. You've got to actually just be sensible and take your chances, still put the pressure on your opponent. You're much more likely to get a draw that way. Yeah, if you play principal chess, you will get a chance later on in the game to maybe trade some pieces or maybe repeat the position or go on an attack where uh, at the very minimum, you'll be able to bail out with a draw. So, yeah, you're completely right. It's yeah. uh, I've been there myself, needing a draw sometimes for a grandmaster normal to yeah. win a tournament and going too uh, kind of too single-mindedly in that direction, it will backfire. Yeah. So, OK, a trade of another set of pawns here and uh, Eric captured away from the centre. Look at the white dark square bishop on a nice diagonal. Geary, however, the clock times dictate that he's pretty much in his preparation. I'm a, I'm a little bit surprised that this exchange happened because uh, it has allowed Eric to unbalance the structure even a little bit, kind of helps him in a must-win situation. Uh, did Anish really need to, to capture there so quickly? Uh, I'm not sure, um, but he does seem to know what he's doing, doesn't he? He's played B5 and okay, yes, he's moving very, very quickly. Very quickly, and uh, actually that pawn capture that we saw a few moves ago, that was totally new, never been played before. Everyone else had been right. playing more like you suggested, keeping okay. attention, and uh, well, Anish does seem to have it all worked out, yeah. at least judging by clock times. Yeah. yeah, and we know from his games, but also his chessable courses, uh, Anish is one of the leading experts one of the, uh, in openings, one of the leading theoreticians. Do you think we'll see a... Uh... These days and... Do you think we we'll see a chessboard course from Magnus on 1F3, potentially? Maybe you could do a joint one with him. I you mean, know, 20 I hour of videos, <laughs> you know, how, half how price. to lose with 1F3. <laughs> he, yeah. survived. he survived. He survived. He survived. Yeah, yeah. It could oh, be, yeah. How impressive is that, actually? To survive when the first move you make against one of the best players in the world is 1F3. It is, pr it is yeah. pretty impressive, actually, yeah. because, you know, the 1F3 is kind of like a joke opening, you mm. know. I do know a story about the England top juniors. They had, a, like, a, an account online, and uh, their whole goal with this pawn move was actually to get their king as far up the board as it could possibly go oh. without getting checkmated and then dash back down again. And uh, they Such bad habits. <laughs> <laughs> Such bad habits. Not these days. Be, oh, no. Not to be advised, <laughs> but, you know, they, they worked on this a little bit, you know, where the king can, king can go, and they got to quite a high rating. But it is oh. like a joke. You, you, don't, you don't do it, you know, for a serious game of chess. Yeah. And you certainly don't do it, you know, in a match situation either. Yeah, and uh, we normally talk about the white pieces. You have a small advantage in the opening because you can choose the type of position. But I think F3 is the only way, or one of the only ways, you can guarantee that you have a disadvantage yeah. from move one. I think it probably is the worst move on move one. I can't, I can't think of a, you know, a, a worse option than one F3 because it weakens your king, takes away square for the knight, gives away, <laughs> just gives away everything, doesn't it? Yeah. So it's like terrible. It's like the whole thing is yeah. um, actually probably taking a square from the knight. Yeah, That's probably yeah. what makes it. So you can't but... develop. Yeah, can't castle easily. It is actually you know, so, yeah. a, a recognised <laughs> opening to push the F-pawn two squares forward. Yeah, yeah. And meanwhile, we see Giri at the front of our picture, but also Liam and his position uh, in the background there. Giri just playing a really good move there, bringing his rook across, just peeking over at Liam's screen. Looks pretty balanced. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Giri just bringing his rook across. He's getting ready to push the black C-pawn forward two squares. Uh, Eric, meanwhile, bringing his queen forward, and there we go. Black C pawn does indeed push forward. He's just trying to initiate maximum uh, trades here. He's just trying to exchange off as many pawns as possible. We said don't play straight for the draw, but Giri's doing that, and yeah, but he's he's, he's doing it in a semi-clever way because I mean he could have pushed. He potentially sacrificing that B pawn. Mm -hmm. he, he he's you know he knows what he's doing at least here. So yeah. 
Yep, he yeah. knows what he's doing because after this pawn is recaptured, either by the black rook or by the black dark square bishop, yes, black's e pawn in the middle of the board might even fall, but white's a pawn on the left side also about to be picked yeah. off. So it's just going to kind of uh, transition into a position where lots of pieces have disappeared. Maybe pawns will disappear as well, and Eric just not left with enough uh, firepower. No. Yeah, it's a good opening choice by Anish, I have to say. You know, the position is very open when the when all the pawns have been traded off, the more pieces that get traded mm -hmm. off, like you say, it's going to be... What is Eric doing? <laughs> he's scrolling down his playlist, I think. He's choosing a song. Ah, <laughs> yeah, he's choosing get, 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 Getting the priorities right, so uh, this oh, is can good. Can we get a close-up of his screen? Oh, crap. Oh. <laughs> 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 yeah. Milliseconds too slow there, mm. you know, Kaya. But uh, meanwhile, a trade of a set of pawns. And this is the type of position where you do really need to get pumped. You need to, the creative juices yeah. to start flowing because it's so balanced. Yes, the evaluation bar's on white side. I'm slightly surprised it's that far on white side. Yeah. But uh, you need something because if those two pawns on the left side of the board, if black's B-pawn and white's A-pawn both disappear as well, it's just complete symmetry. Yeah. So play will switch to one side of the board and it should be a draw. I mean, the one, one thing I'm seeing is that all of black's pieces are leased over on the queen side. Mm -hmm. You know, so you can see the black king. Come on, let's, let's, try to, let's try to launch towards the black king somehow. I mean, I, I guess I'm thinking bishop takes pawn first to, to open that one up and just unbalance the structure. Uh, but you've got these knight h4 ideas are very typical as well at the right moment. Um, I don't think it's a good move here, but this kind of idea is, is typical for, for the rule Lopez in, in general. Yeah. Um, but I guess maybe bishop takes pawn and just uh, you know, get that one in the game. Yeah, and uh, I guess Black will reply to this by capturing another pawn. Yeah. And uh, Black does have a passed pawn, but it's a slightly weak uh, attacking White's rook as well. Yeah. What about here, Simon? Trade or maybe dodge? Maybe you gain a bit of time if you trade at least. Yeah, yeah. And, and this is where you need a, a, a big move, isn't it? Or, or to put some pressure on your opponent. One idea uh, could be just retreating this bishop. I'm not sure where. Maybe back one square or even. Uh, you can win a pawn here, can't you? I mean, or can you? Maybe not because of bishop a6. But I was thinking if you take the knight, take on b5. But that's probably not going to be enough to win. And there is a little cheeky move at the end of that that black can play as well. Yeah. All um, the trades, white to pawn up, but at the very end. Bishop a6, yeah. yeah. Some tricks. Yeah. Skewer here. Um, I was going to say the other alternative, if you're not trying to play greedy, is just retreat. And at least now it's imbalanced. In a must-win situation, imbalancing the pawn structure is important. And you do have an idea of pushing forward with yeah. the pawn. Maybe looks like it. opening up your bishop. I like this because look at the bishops then and, and yeah. the black king. This is kind of this is the kind of thing you need as white. The the attack, as we said right at the start. Yeah. For just example, to, if you go get for one more move, I mean, suddenly this bishop gets opened up. The yeah. other bishop supports it on this diagonal. Uh, pointing towards the Black King, so maybe we're yeah. not giving Eric enough credit here. I think he's uh, doing okay. Actually. I mean, maybe Giri, like, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, maybe Giri rushing too fast towards that draw. Yeah. And uh, in the current position here, uh, we're expecting Giri to go and capture this pawn because he is temporarily uh, one uh, of these foot soldiers down. So if he captures this pawn, a rook trade. This is what we're expecting: the White Bishop to jump out of the way and then to just launch this pawn forward, launch the attack against the Black King, and just hope that that pays off. <laughs> It looks nice. It looks yeah. nice for white, actually. Okay. Um, oh, he didn't retreat his bishop. I thought that was maybe the key, maybe the way to go. He brought his rook to that square instead. But what's the idea here? Bishop takes knight. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the first one, isn't it? But is that even so great? For example, even if I allow it, if I push this pawn forward, if you trade, okay, I, here I can take with the queen, but even if you get this pawn structure, Ooh. oh, maybe you Ooh. can drop forward. <laughs> I'm still sceptical, but... Really? I'll just plant my king in the corner. I don't know. Okay, yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is the type of position where we'd have a battle and Simon would try and checkmate me, I would just try and curl up into a ball and survive. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'd resign five moves later. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, yeah, so if we come back to the current position, this is maybe a threat. Bishop takes knight because, uh, for example, if black just makes a random move, now the queen can't take because this bishop would just fall. So uh, trying yeah. to ruin the black pawn structure. Mm -hmm. Still interesting. I mean, all the white pieces are in the middle. They've yeah. got a lot of potential. So, um, uh, yeah, lots to play for. And uh, speaking of interesting, um, we do have a question from Lofi on Twitter who asks us, how do we prepare for the before, for the blah, 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 blah. I'll start again. Lofi asks us, how do you prepare yourself before each live broadcast? Um, that is a good question. Lots of lots of um, water, you know, the normal kind of thing. Try to do a bit of, uh, you know, a bit of information on what the players are going to do, have an idea of what's happening, and uh, yeah, and then stress out, <laughs> you know, so, yeah, for round one with the tension. But no, no, it's it's a lot of fun, yeah. and just try to keep it light and enjoy enjoy the time here. I think it's important. Yeah. So yeah. 
Yeah, um, I try and do a bit of research on the players, look at their head-to-head -head scores, look at some openings that they play, or that their favourite openings may be. Um, and today, for example, I played some sports uh, earlier today just to kind of loosen up and uh, get the blood flowing. I mean, we do start the broadcast very late. The players, I mean, they start their games very late in the day. So you need to train yourself. You don't want to wake up at 6 a.m. in the morning because imagine starting the games at 6 p.m. Uh, Oslo time. They'll be exhausted. Mm. So uh, it's all about adapting, making sure you're fully focused and you peak at the right time. Definitely. Um, I think that's yeah. the key. And yeah. I do remember there was a, an interview that Pragnananda did um, after he defeated uh, Magnus. And they asked him, you know, what was your training? And he said, because he was playing so late at night, he'd spent weeks playing at one o'clock in the morning mm. just to get the mind ready for yeah. chess is going to happen in the evening. Yeah. You have to be sharp by then. And uh, yeah, so preparation is key. This is morning for Pragnananda. He's used to playing the Maltwater Champions chess at 10, <laughs> 11, mm -hmm. midnight. And uh, in Oslo right now, the clock is uh, 9 p.m., but it all starts at 6 p.m. So, you know, late, but uh, early for uh, Pragnananda. Yeah. Nice change. He seems to thrive at that time winning his match in three games. Yeah. Anish Giri. Anish Giri strikes me as a morning person. I don't know, though. I reckon he's got two kids. Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah. they're going to be waking him up at, at silly o'clock. I've got one cat, which normally wakes me up at, like, five or six. So <laughs> in it's the just morning? Like in the morning, oh. yeah. So it's like, OK, I'm up, you know, so, yeah. Really? So I'm, I'm a bit of a morning person now. I never used to be, but, uh, yeah. Oh. Uh, so. And how is Charlie coping when you're in Oslo, Simon? He's been well looked after. I'm sure very, very well spoiled. So, <laughs> yeah. and you know, he's got his nice garden and a bit of sun. He's doing all right. He's doing well. I'm, I'm sure. glad to hear. Yeah. Charlie, how old is he, Charlie? He's old. He's like 18, 19 now. <laughs> what? So, yeah, he's an old, old ginger cat. So, still doing all right though. So yeah, he's, he's you know, Healthy. doing well. Healthy, healthy, healthy cat. Wow. Yeah, big ginger. Gets Legendary. In, gets into fights. I've been following uh, Charlie. Since, well, we've had two cats. I don't know why we're talking about cats, but I've got to, I've got to continue now. <laughs> yes. we've, had, we've had two cats move on to the hood um, from <laughs> Afghanistan, so they're a bit gangster style. Cause really? They, yeah, they've come refugee cats, so the person <laughs> adopted them, so they're trying to, like, you know, put their stamp on the on the territory. Ooh. So, uh, yeah, there's some, there's some warfare going on as I speak, probably. <laughs> So, yeah. And Charlie's taking the hit? He, he, no, no, he's standing his ground. OK. You know, so, yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> cat, cat drama <laughs> as we speak. This is a cat fight, this game. Yeah, nice it's touch. shaping up to be. OK, I mean, nice. Both players are being territorial. Both players are standing their ground. Yeah. Um, especially Eric. I think he's not backing down from that fight because he did give up the bishop pair, something I'm really reluctant to do. He did. We did see a bishop for knight trade. But that gained Eric the time to push a pawn forward. And now he's hitting the black queen. The black queen has to move. But more importantly, white's light squared bishop has opened up a path now towards the black king. So Giri has to be a bit careful where he places his queen. There's not too many safe squares. Um, I would be inclined to maybe shift it across two squares just to keep the black king nice and safe. But once the black queen moves, Eric can play for an attack, maybe utilizing that uh, light squared diagonal, or he can play positionally. Just trade off the light squared bishops, bring the light squared bishop to the middle, <laughs> and uh, OK, there we go. It's more important to get the playlist right. And what's, yes, yeah. what song are you choosing? Uh, what's he going for? Ooh, he's scrolling through all of it. OK, he's... Ch oh, we can see... What is the name? Divisi? Avicii, maybe. Yeah. Was it Avicii? Ooh, I think the Twitter... Uh, our Twitter yes. viewers might have to help us uh, work yep. out what that was, what that song was. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, it might have been Avicii. Uh, and we do know. He likes that kind of music, Eric, right? A little bit pumped up. Yeah, but I, I don't know. I suspect it might be like some trance type of yeah. music -y or techno. So something that he can just get himself uh, ready and yeah. fight. You can see him. He's bouncing to it. He's bouncing to it. He's getting in the fight. And I feel actually caught it. DVS1. Okay. I feel old now. I don't know what that is. Some techno song, I'm sure. DVS1. I mean, anyone who's watched the Chess Bra stream knows that. Eric, Aman, all the chess bras out there. They, this is their, yeah. this is their jam. This is what they uh, get pumped on, and yeah. this kind of gives them the rhythm, especially with blitz chess and rapid chess as well, to an extent. Well, look at the rhythm. Look at the valuation bar. I mean, it's oh. jumped, and I was, 
I was going to say, these positions where White has that pawn in the middle uh, on that square, that dark square, I love playing these positions with the white white side because I think it was, uh, you mentioned Max Uwe, who said mm -hmm. when you've got a pawn there, you attack the king. And this is what Eric needs to do. He just needs to attack the king. Is there a big move here, though? Is there some tactic after this move, uh, some way he can, you know, go straight for the king now? Um, Still not 100% obvious. Is, no. is there some kind of tactic with the, the I'm just thinking that knight uh, that is sitting there on the a7 square oh, and I, I'm just I'm just, yeah so I'm just uh, I'm inspired by that game that you um, Pragananda played by Jordan and I'm trying to think loose pieces drop off tactical weaknesses and I see that the bishop was also a tactical weakness so I'm just thinking maybe you just slide your queen one square forward and attack the knight Okay, because, so hitting this knight with the rook and with the queen. Yeah, and another that. idea is to actually, within that, is knight takes bishop. Okay, so first knight takes bishop. No, 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 I'm thinking queen's forward first, but okay. an idea, and another tactical idea that I, that's kind of a little bit hidden is I mean, knight takes bishop. Here you would just have to, oh, I guess, gosh. figure out what happens if the rook yeah. falls in the No, I, I didn't see that, sorry. Okay, so maybe similar idea, but just a different order. Maybe you can take the bishop first, mm -hmm. and after rook takes, yeah. then you can think about your move, Yvanka. So hitting... Uh, the knight with your rook, hitting it with the queen as well, a double attack. And for example, if the knight just moves out the way, then suddenly discovered attack. Bishop takes pawn check, looking for checks first in every single position. And suddenly the black rook is undefended and might fall off the board. I don't think this quite works because uh, in this position, black can deal with both of those threats against his knight and against his rook in one move. Black can offer a trade of queens potentially, uh, just defending everything. I don't see a knockout blow here for white. But this is the type of thing that Eric will be looking for. And uh, I'm just wondering, first thing I'm drawn to, uh, as Simon mentioned, when you have this pawn, that's the signal to try and attack. Uh, and you use that kind of to support pieces jumping forward. Maybe you could at some point think of jumping a knight. I don't think, uh, I don't think that works right now, but maybe you can prepare it. The rook is attacked after all. Maybe mm -hmm. just bring your rook to the side. And uh, I mean, there's knight on f to g5, mm -hmm. which is quite interesting. I'm just going to throw, throw that one in. If you take the rook, then I play your try your move yeah. you know this could lead to absolute chaos you, you then bring the knight in with check and uh, the queen if, if it's captured flies it's a very nice checkmate if the king goes to the side there a beautiful, ah, yeah. a beautiful two knight checkmate so you probably have to accept this yeah um, the king dodges the check then whoops oops yeah that's, that's a nice nice cheeky two knight one really right uh, there but this is the kind of thing you, you you go for right and if you're in a must win situation well okay why not and you might have one attacker two attackers three attackers yeah Black King looks pretty lonely out there on its own. It's still not 100% clear whether this works. Maybe the Black King can start making a mad dash <laughs> for the center yeah. for safety. And you've sacrificed a lot of material here, a rook and a piece down. And that's why Eric is calculating right now. He's actually played really quickly up to this point, still with over 10 minutes left. And he has stopped at the critical moment when the evaluation bar has jumped up. He's calculating this knight check. He's calculating this knight jumping forward. He's calculating, as Ivanka mentioned, maybe taking this bishop off or pushing the queen forward. So, so many options. But what is the best move? If, if nothing else works, very minimum, I think he should move this rook out of the way. I'm not sure exactly where. Maybe to attack Black's bishop or centralize it. And uh, I don't think Giri can actually get... OK, he does capture the bishop. I was going to say, I don't think Giri can get greedy because there would be some sneaky ideas of knights jumping forward, tactics like this one. But... OK, this is the position. We mentioned this, uh, Yvanka. This was your instinct, and now Black maybe only has one move. Yeah, but, but, maybe but it's your a good move is a great move. You know, it just completely neutralises all the tactical ideas that I had, and uh, suddenly I don't think there's that much in it for White anymore. Yeah, the Queen trade. If the Queen's come off the board, we're heading towards a draw, and oh. Giri will win today's match. So I think Giri needs to find this move, but it's a process of elimination. There's not much else. The knight is attacked after all by white's rook and queen. And uh, you do need to defend this rook, which is loose. Loose pieces drop off. Uh, so, yeah, you can deal with that mm. with one move. Trade the queens. And Giri should be edging towards safety. Eric paused at the right moment, the critical moment, but he still has 10 minutes. Maybe he could have invested another three or four oh, uh, yeah. to find a way to keep the tension. And Anishi only needs a draw to win the match. Four players have already finished uh, their matches, and look at that. It's a really good atmosphere out in the lounge. Magnus is hanging out, having some of that fantastic sushi. Jordan is playing. It looks like he's having a great time. And we also see Jacob. He's our social media chief, having a great time. We see Johann Sebastian. He's the second in this tournament for Jordan van Forest. 
That looks uh, that looks really nice. I want to go out there and have some sushi. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Eric and Anisha are going to join them. Yeah. Uh, no matter the outcome of their match today. And uh, yeah, the sushi, the bonus. Fantastic. And do you think these two will be heading out to the lounge quite soon? Or, or is there chances for Eric to fight, fight, fight for a win? It's going to be difficult after that queen move, I feel. But um, Eric, he wants to go down fighting. Uh, also, all of the Chesbra fans, they're going to be watching this game from yeah. afar. He knows he's got their, uh, their support, so he'll want to give them a show. And a draw is the same as a loss here, pretty much. And why not? Why not go for the win? Yeah. Why not take risks or yeah, I'm, at least try something later? I'm wondering why Anish has taken his time. I, is it possibly the knight comes in the middle? Did you look at that here? Is uh, that the I'm only try? Thinking. I mean, because you have to try something as, as risky as it is. Can you move your knight? He's played the move that uh, we, we're worried if you're an Eric, you know, Eric fan. But can the knight at least come in now? Try that? Maybe you have to try yeah. something like that, right? So blocking the trade of queens by planting the knight in the middle of this diagonal. Um, the tension between the queens is just too much right now. If you don't play this, the problem is that black is attacking your bishop with his rook. Black's bishop is pointing down at the white knight. Yeah, just too many problems. And maybe you're right, Simon. Maybe that's what white needs to do. Maybe you have to try it. I mean, for better or worse, you've you got to... Because if white can play two moves, like move the knight and push that pawn again in the centre of the board or do something similar, then white white's attack is, is, is still going. Uh, but... Um, it's quite hard to get two moves in a row, isn't it, in a game of chess? So. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. especially in the uh, esports arena out there, we yeah. do obey the rules. So two yeah. moves in a row <laughs> might, get, might get caught out. And uh, Anish is so strong as well. I mean, he's he's a very experienced fighter. And we should mention as well, we do have on-site arbiters. So um, yeah. if the players do try anything a bit sneaky <laughs> like that, yeah. the arbiters might step in. Yeah. 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 And uh, I do have to share with you two funny tweets by Valentino. And uh, Valentino says that they're looking forward to Simon Williams' new playlist, Ginger GM's 80s cheesy, ch cheesy chess tunes. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm not really into my cheesy music, I have to say. It's not, I mean, not really, my, not really me, but, uh, you know, I can't, I mean, I'm trying to think of one now. I can imagine now, you so. as a DJ. Welcome to <laughs> the Chess Tunes. Juicy Chess Tunes. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, they also say that they're also looking forward to your new book, Charlie's Fighting Chess for Cool Cats. Oh. Yeah, well, that's, uh, yeah, that's yeah, possible. It's so, possible. Yeah, yeah, I'd, like well. to, I'd like to yeah. a description of what happened to Charlie. Yeah. yeah, he's doing well. Cat yeah. fighting chess. Yeah. 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 Well, not... I don't... Know, it doesn't feel like a cat fight yet. In this game, Eric Hansen fighting hard to find a win. The same situation in uh, the other game going on. Liam Lehi has to win. Game four against Shahriyar Mamdiarov to take it to tie breaks. I'm, I will be very surprised if we have no tie breaks on the first day. That would be a huge shock, actually. <laughs> Yeah. It would be surprising, but yeah. we have been surprised actually yeah. by the lack of tie breaks because uh, so far this season there's been one one tie break between Duda and Magnus Carlsen yeah. in the final. So mm. that was the final of the Charity Cup. So yeah, incredible stuff. Yeah. So and we've also seen it here a lot of decisive games. Yeah, because that must be uh, the reason we're just seeing a lot more decisive games. Yeah, last season we had the kind of traditional format with half a point for a draw, one point for a win and lots of players just playing it safe, mm. just uh, not taking too many chances and especially in the prelims and maybe that just continued into knockout phases and we saw tie breaks galore, which was exciting as well. But uh, this season players taking risks, actually really ambitious trying to win mm -hmm. uh, in kind of normal time. So mm, yeah. Um, yeah, Herrick, meanwhile, he's got his head down. I'd be interested to see what his facial expressions are, to be honest, because I don't think he's happy. Mm. Maybe he just missed this move, this uh, this yeah. queen move. Otherwise, he would have had a reply prepared beforehand, and so. now spending the time, it might be too late. And yeah, uh, yeah it's just hard. If you keep yeah. the queens on, risk is involved. Mm. So, I mean, if you do play knight d4, what, and he, oh. he's played it, I yeah. think he has to play this, because everything else is just bad. I mean, you're not, you're not going to win, so you have to keep the queens on. Uh, I, you know, I mean, this is, this is still fighting. Um, this, you know, you need one more move now, but you black, yeah, yeah, this move can can really change things around. Yeah. Uh, black has a lot of decent moves here, though. Attack the knight with a rook, yeah. um, many other options as well. Yeah, you could attack the knight with a rook. However, Simon, maybe here you could push the pawn forward. Right. And uh, it's your idea, basically, to break 
through to the Black yeah. King. I don't think Black really wants to take this because suddenly, whoops, the Black King is really out in the open. And uh, the whole idea is a really beautiful one, actually. If you take the knight with the queen, you just ignore the tension with the queens, you just push forward with your pawn. And look at this, checkmate on the board, next move, back rank checkmate. Uh, but yeah, uh, you're right though, a few moves. This looks super loose, really loose here, these two pieces. And yeah. another option that maybe comes to mind, um, as you mentioned, attacking the knights, is to trade off the knights. And uh, now this knight under fire, also a tension between these rooks have been unleashed. These rooks disappear. This is a very good move, isn't it? You, mm. you bring your worst place piece into the game, you try to swap the pieces off, rooks, knights, they're all coming off. Mm. And Nish is so good in these kind of positions. I've seen him do this many times before. He very rarely, you know, blunders, makes any mistakes, and he knows exactly what to aim for, mm. involving small calculations with good uh, positional decisions. Yeah. So I think it's looking very good for Nish fans, but not so good for Eric. Yeah, and one thing I was going to say as well, when you're when you're in that drawing mode, you tend to instinctively like offer pieces for trade because you're hoping yep. for them to be swapped off so that you can go to a simplified position. And it just so happens here that this is the best move in the position. Yeah. It's what needs to be done. And uh, I, I, I like the way that Anish is playing. And I don't see any way for Eric to kind of keep the game going, actually, apart Problems. from... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you have to take big risks here, but I don't think they'll pay off. Uh, apart from pushing this pawn forward, which doesn't work anymore, because now there's no rook to capture, or there's nothing to capture, you can't push forward because black actually defends the promotion square of, uh, of this white pawn. Uh, so if this pawn push doesn't work, what else could you try? You could try stepping forward with the queen, lining up against this pawn. But uh, after queen takes, for example, yes, you get one check, yes, you get two checks, but is it really enough? You can capture the black bishop, but your own bishop falls, and here, you're attacking with one piece, and one piece isn't enough to win the game when you attack. This white rook is just a bystander, not participating. So all attacking options here just look like they're not quite working. Mm. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. and what, what happens if you go go for broke and you just step up the queen? I mean, In this position? Yeah, just maybe go rook takes rook first. Okay. And, uh, and now step up the queen. Uh, but this is the variation we just showed oh, you. Oh, sorry, sorry, queen yeah. takes knight. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, okay. yeah, it's just not quite working. It's one check, it's two checks, but no more. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't think there's anything really, is there, unfortunately? I mean, yeah, I mean, Anish is just too well coordinated here uh, with his rook, queen, pieces, yeah. Yeah, knight, and uh, he's going for, it, like you say, his last move was the natural one to play, and it's the best move, and he's making exchanges. So, um, not really, I mean, Eric missed his chance, didn't he, by swapping off his dark square bishop, it seems. Had he, had he kept, you know, kept that bishop on the board, uh, it would have given many more uh, attacking possibilities. Yeah, the Dutch so. bishop here, the black king would just be doomed. Yeah, yeah. yeah so this is where chess is so difficult. At times, it's the right decision to swap off those bishops, yeah. and other times, it's the right decision to yeah. build. And uh, well, chess is hard. This is the beauty <laughs> of chess. You know, it's every tricky, tricky every game. day, you know, you get a new game, a new position, a new challenge. And uh, I think someone said when they were talking about video games that uh, often when you play these video games or computer games, you kind of get to the top level and that's it, you've completed it. And with chess, you never get there. It's always like infinite, you're always yeah. carrying it on. I think that's the beauty, game. isn't it? That no matter what level you're at, even Magnus, you know, you can get better. Yeah. You, know, you can always get better. Even the best computers out there, they can get better. So it's kind of a, a game without any barriers really, which is, really like nothing else and isn't know? it kind of like so. the perfect move isn't always the perfect move as well in a human game because you want to play on the clock you want to yeah. maybe play on the other player's weaknesses S sometimes i mean magnus does this a lot he doesn't play the best move yeah you know he plays the second third best move mm. to get his opponent out of preparation and then to you know get him into territory where he can outplay them so it's uh yeah i mean it's um it's there's lots of different ways you can do it and mm. play so uh <laughs> Look at that, there's an AirThings device in the Oslo Esports Arena. And uh, air quality, very good for the players. A little bit, uh, is that a bit lower high humidity? Yamanka, you're the AirThings expert. 19%. I think it's a little bit low. A little bit low. Uh, but don't quote me on that. I, I would <laughs> imagine I, I, that, you know, it's not too hu humid in a TV yeah. studio like that. The right? thing is, my AirThings device always tells me what to do. Mm because I have it on a little app and it goes, oh, the humidity is low. So I never kind of pay attention to the numbers and mm. it goes, you know, have a shower, open the door. Yeah. That's what it ends. Okay, we need to bring in the shower.
to uh, the Oslo Esports Arena. It tells you when to have a shower. <laughs> no, it, it, it just it monitors yeah. the air quality in my room. What, and if so it gets if a bit it, whiffy. <laughs> <laughs> have a shower. <laughs> go, go now, quick. It smells bad yeah. in here. But it, actually, oh. it does measure right. like chemicals in the air, so you know. Oh, right, so it, it yeah. does sort of like, <laughs> you're getting attacked by chemicals. Shower now. <laughs> Use that shower. Could be very useful with some chess players after that story you Ooh, told me the other day. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I think in many settings, it could be nice if someone got a, you know, have a shower. You're, you're in the office now. <laughs> <laughs> like Home of office coach. is over. <laughs> they should make it voice activated just to really embarrass the person. <laughs> shower! <laughs> now! <laughs> you know what I'm All right, well, a free uh, advice for AirThings there. The next feature to have in uh, the fantastic AirThings device. Yep. Telling people to shower when they should. Invoice in the post. Yes. <laughs> Meanwhile, Giri looking very, very chilled. I've got to give him credit in this game. In the past, maybe he's had an unfair reputation for maybe draws and things, but that's only because he's so good at safety first chess. Yeah. He's so good at neutralising the opponent when he wants to. Yeah. Uh, I mean, nowadays he's much more attacking, more dynamic, but um, yeah, he's closing in on this, uh, this draw, which will win him today's match. Uh, there's only been a couple of moves. White's rook swung across to attack Black's bishop in the corner and Black's bishop just went to a safe square. And still the same problems persist for Hansen. There's no way to keep the knights on the board, no way to keep the queens on the board. And if everything disappears, a draw is the best White can hope for. Yeah. Also note how White's back rank is slightly vulnerable. Uh, White's king doesn't have any escape squares. Same for Black's king. And I think that's the only thing that could decide this game in either side's favour is the fact that neither king has these uh, kind of hidey holes and uh, therefore back rank checkmate ideas are in the air but uh, yeah in general Eric now under one minute as well it's looking like he's running out of resources mm. and mm. it's the kind of position where Eric is not going to be wanting a draw a draw is the same yeah. as, a, as a loss so he might just lose just because he yeah. takes the wrong decision that's really interesting actually he's clicked on his knight but he hasn't chosen a square for it so um, is there we... touch, touch Touch piece move a piece? No, not it's not. Touch piece move no. piece. Okay, oh, okay. He trades the knights. Oh, okay, right. But it's interesting that he clicked on his knight and then the computer for you, it showed you the eight possible squares the knight could use. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it shows you outside all of the assistance. Legal moves. The octo well, <laughs> that's not very fair. <laughs> so, it's helping you make legal moves. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so no outside assistance. It didn't tell you which knight move was the best. There were eight possible knight moves. Mm -hmm. In the end, he traded off a set of knights. And now, Giri, is he going to keep the queens on the board or is he going to? just uh, refuse to capture that knight for now and mm. trade off. Do you think these players also have that uh, feature that th the king turns red if it's uh, in check? Ooh, interesting. Maybe we'll have to zoom <laughs> yeah. in on the screens at some point. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Very, I'm, I'm very happy to have that feature when I play online chess because yeah. I w won't always see the check. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but these players obviously will, so I don't know. Yeah. Most of the time. Yeah. Uh, I have played bullet chess, one minute chess, where you just have to pre-move everything because you don't have enough time on the clock. And I try to make a move and I'm like, why isn't it letting yeah. me? And then I realise, oh, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> whoops, that was a check. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Geary here. Do you think he can just trade the queens? I think he can, probably, if he wants to. I mean, I, I guess taking the knight with a queen, good move. Taking the queens off, good move. Yeah, as, as we're saying, you instinctively make exchanges when you want to get a draw. So queen takes queen. Probably, probably the the first move you think of. I mean, maybe you, some pawn could be one, but yeah, I, I, I was going to say that. I mean, do you allow white to win a pawn I, I just in I the name of simplification? I think it's a very easy draw yes. if you do. Um, anyway, and Anisha's a brilliant endgame player, um, so he's just thinking now. I don't know how much time he's. Well, he's got lots of time, so he's making the right decision, deciding which way to go um, to to try and get that draw. Yeah, so just to show maybe what is about to happen and what Anish is thinking about right now, it's two main options. Either you can take this knight back with your queen, actually threatening a checkmate along this diagonal. The pawn in front of White's king is under fire, and this looks pretty healthy, as Simon mentioned. Also, you've got a pin here. I don't think there's any real danger. But the queens are on, and things bad things can happen while the queens are on. And, uh, OK, instead, after knight takes knight, he has indeed traded. And as you guys were mentioning, White is about to win a pawn because he can actually take this guy and uh, utilising this idea I mentioned earlier, the background checkmate, black is doomed here. You can only throw pieces in the way, but in this position, black will not take that. He'll just create a square for his king and the game will end in a draw. And we did see two players leave the arena, Shakrian Mamdiarov and Liam Lea. They have finished game four and they have finished the match. It is a draw and Shakrian Mamdiarov, he won game two.
And he is the winner of that match, gaining three points and uh, zero points for Liam Le. In the first match, he's going to face Magnus Carlsen tomorrow. So a tough start for Liam Le in uh, the Oslo Esports Cup. And probably also for Eric Hansen if he can find a win in this game. And it's the worst possible opponent to have to win against. And Ishigiri is just an expert in denying his opponent a win. Yeah, exactly. And uh, okay, instead of pushing a pawn in front of the Black King, he's created an escape route for it by marching it towards the center. White is a pawn up, but look at those white double D pawns. Yeah, yeah they're too weak. Sure, guys. One of those pawns will just drop and it will be free versus free. There's a saying, all rook endings are drawn. They're, they're not, but this one is very, very drawn. All the pawns, there's no past pawns. There's not really, there's not really much going on, is there, unfortunately, for Eric. And uh, Eric only has uh, 18 seconds to boot. So, I mean, if the, the roles were reversed, the times, I mean, and it was Giri playing on 20 seconds, maybe there's a chance. But uh, as the time stands now, it's looking like 99% likely that's going to finish in a draw. And he's winning that pawn back now, and it's mm -hmm. totally symmetrical yeah. here. Um, any moment, Eric, I think, is just going to offer the draw because he wants to fight to the death, but there's nothing else to do. And there we go. Yeah, the match yeah. is over. It is.